Hello Divination and welcome to our brand new mini series on how to create a simple and effective portfolio website using Divi. In this mini series, we'll be covering everything that you need to know in order for you to create your own portfolio website from scratch. The goal of our mini series is to provide you with tips and techniques to help you enhance your design skills with Divi. In this video, we'll be taking the minimal portfolio website we built over the last four videos and setting up some tests to help maximize its effectiveness. To do this, we'll be using Divi's A-B testing system, Divi Leads. Okay, so before we get started, we need to build a thank you page. The reason we need to build a thank you page is not because thank you pages are required for split tests in general, but because we're going to do a specific type of split test using Divi Leads tracking code, which we'll place on this page. So I've gone ahead and created my thank you page. Mine is just plain and simple. You know, it's just thank you, I'll be in touch. So you can design your page however you want it. It doesn't really matter. So the most important thing here is copy this link. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back into my dashboard, pages, all pages, and we're going to go into the about and contact page. Now, the reason why we're coming here to into the about and contact page is because we need to add the uh, link we've just copied onto the redirect. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go into the modules here, we need to activate this, just set this to yes, and then we need to add that link that we copied. So how this is gonna work is if someone on the um, main page of our website clicks the, um, the call to action, it then takes them to the contact page, and for us to track whether that form or someone has filled in some information is when they get this confirmation page, which is a thank you page. So this is one way we can track uh, how many people have filled in the form. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and exit. And we're also gonna do this on the second form, which is here. So again, I'm gonna scroll all the way down and just make sure that enable redirect URL is set to yes, and that is my link. So once we're done with that, you need to go ahead and save and exit. So I'm just gonna click update for the page. So the next thing we're gonna do here is to go to our main page. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to all pages and then I'm gonna click on portfolio. So this is our front page, which is our main page. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit. If you followed along in the previous videos, you should have a layout that looks pretty much like this. Now that we have this layout, it's always good practice that we save this master layout. Now, the reason why we're saving this is because if something goes wrong with our split test and we accidentally delete one of these sections, it means that we have to redesign that section. So it's always good that we have this uh, saved in our library, just in case any of that happens. Okay, so in order for you to save this to the library, you need to come here to save to library, and then you need to give this a name, so this is, this is the name, we're gonna call the uh, homepage layout. Now, here's the tip. Now, what I suggest here is, every time you save these layouts, you need to save them in such a way that it's easy for you to remember, because when we have so many items in our library, it's very difficult to pinpoint which one it is. So it's a good practice to save these with a name that is relevant to what it is you're saving. So in this example here, we've got a minimal portfolio master homepage layout. Then once you're done with that, you, you need to go ahead and save. So now that is saved to the library. So now that we've saved the layout of the whole page, what we need to do is to start saving each and every section. So to save the sections, all you need to do is to come here on uh, the side, right click, and then click on save to library. Now, as I mentioned before, the same thing with the sections, make sure you save these sections uh, with very, very good names because you need to be able to remember or find which section you've saved. So here, again, we're using minimal portfolio hero section one. So now that you know how to save all these sections to the library, go ahead and save the rest of the sections, okay? So once you're done with that, just go ahead, click update. So next we need to save the other page, which is the about and contact. So we're gonna follow, we are going to follow through the same process. Go to all pages, about and contact, click on edit. And then you need to save this whole layout into your TV library. So just click on save to library, give it a name and then save. So let me show you where all these files are saved. So if you go to Divi, 
Divi library. This is where all the layouts are saved and all the sections. Okay, so now that we have our pages saved and all our sections saved and named correctly, the next thing we're gonna do here is to set up the split test. So to set up the split test, we need to come here to the, to the top where you have this hamburger icon. So click once on it, and then here we can see enable split testing is currently set to no. What we need to do is to click on yes. And then once we've done that, go ahead and click on save. We're gonna go ahead and click on proceed. Now, when we set up split test, there's two things you have to bear in mind. There's two items, which is number one, we need the subject. The subject is the items that we're going to be testing against each other, okay? And the action is what we're going to use to determine if those tests between those two is working. So in this case, our subject is going to be these two portfolios the normal portfolio and the filterable portfolio. So we need to test and see which one is working better than the other one. And for us to determine that, in this case, the action is going to be the call to action button. So the more people that click on the call to action button, depending on which portfolio they're on, that's what's gonna determine which one is working better. Okay, so let me go ahead and select the subject. So I'm gonna click once here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now it's time to set the action. So the action here, as I mentioned before, is the call to action button. I'm gonna click once on the button, and now finally we need to click on OK. Okay, so one more time, let me explain what's happening here. So this area here is where we're going to do the split test, and in order for us to see how the split test is performing, it's going to be determined by the button. Okay, so every time you set up a split test, the system sets up two items which are identical. So here in this, in section one, we have this normal portfolio. And if we expand this section, we'll notice that section two has the same portfolio here. So what we need to do is to, because obviously we can't test the same portfolio against each other, we won't get you know the results that we need. Ideally, you'd need to go into into the module settings and make some alterations to this to one of the versions in order for you to track which one is better. So in our case now, we don't need to do that because we have a design which is already done here, which is the filterable portfolio. So what we need to do now is to copy this filterable portfolio and bring it into this area here for testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste after. So now we have two versions. We have the filterable portfolio and the normal portfolio. But remember, I said these two are on two sections. So if I click this and expand, you'll see that in section one, we have this portfolio. And in section two, we still have this portfolio and the filterable portfolio. So ideally, we wanna have the filterable portfolio in this section, section two. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this one because it's the same as the one on section one. So now, if we expand this, we'll see that on this section one, we have portfolio. Section two has filterable portfolio. So now we can effectively test between these two. Okay, so now that we have this in place, let's go ahead and click on update. So when you scroll down here, this call to, call to action area, this button here links to the about and contact page. Okay, so if we click here, it means that our, um, our split test is gonna register that there's an action that's happening on this page. So now what we need to test next is if someone has actually filled in the form, how do we track that? So this is what we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do next. So if I click on let's talk, it takes us to this page, right? But for in order for us to know that someone has actually done an inquiry is if someone clicks submit. And remember, if they click submit, it gives them the thank you page. So what we need to do now is to put a tracking code on the thank you page. Let's go ahead and let me show you how to add the tracking code. So I'm gonna go back here to the dashboard and then we're gonna go on to our main page. So if I click on all pages and click on the portfolio, click on edit, this is where we can find the tracking code. So if I click here on the settings, we can see here where it says short code tracking. I'm gonna click on yes. So I'm gonna copy this tracking code and add it onto our thank you page. So I'm gonna go ahead, click update. 
And then I'm gonna go back into all pages and then we're gonna select the um, thank you page. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add one more module. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and then go into the settings. And then I'm just gonna replace this with our tracking code like that. And then right here at the bottom here, it's always good to name this so we know where the tracking code is. So I'm just gonna type in here tracking code and I'm gonna go ahead and save and exit. So now that we have the tracking code in place, every time this page is opened, we know that someone has filled in the contact form. So let's go ahead and click update. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go back, um, click on the page, make, um, make a submission and see if all this is working well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on visit site. So now we're on the main homepage. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here. I'm gonna click on let's talk and then I'm gonna fill in this form. So I'm just gonna put in my details. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on submit. Okay, so now we have a thank you page. Okay, so this seems to be working fine. Let's go back and um, let me show you how to view your stats. So I'm gonna go back into the dashboard and then I'm gonna go into the pages, all pages, and I'm gonna click on the portfolio front uh, page, which is the front page. Now, if you take a look here, we'll see these three bars. So this is where you click to see how your split test, your, your split test is performing. So I'm gonna click once on this and now we can see straight away that there's a bit of data. So we can see that section two, right, which is the uh, portfolio, the normal portfolio has one impression and one click. And that's because I clicked that button. So the more clicks we get on this section means that this one is performing better than the first one and vice versa. Okay, and if you take a look at here, if you take a look at these stats, we can see that we also have reads, we also have um, bounces, goal engagements, and we also have the short code conversions. Okay, so if we click on the, on the short code conversions, now we can see that the amount of people that are clicking on the form have actually come from which version of the portfolio. And in this case, it's the second section. So as you can see, DV Leads is really, really powerful. You can test virtually anything in your designs. And I would suggest you can try a few tests, like for example, testing two hero sections which have different messages on them to see which one is performing better. This will give you an idea of which hero section is working better than the other. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. We will be producing more and more of these videos. Be sure to subscribe because by subscribing, you will be notified when we produce more videos. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.